more than Rodell. What is it about Mike Norvell and the offense that appeals to a running back? Oh man, just his, his energy that he brings every day. Uh, the way he the way he just communicates with us as a team when we're all together is 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 unmatchable, man. His his level is it, uh, his level of intensity is is crazy. Brendan. What do you like about this scheme? Like when you were in the recruiting process, as quick as it was, like what stood out to you when you were doing your, your research? And I guess what have you learned about it since arriving here? Uh, just being able to flex out, do a lot of multiple things on the offense. Uh, not just being a running back, but being a receiver out the backfield. Um, a lot of special plays built in too. I'm still learning it, so uh, I can probably get to that question a little bit on down the road once you ask again. <laughs> we'll go to Jordan. Kind of following up on that, can you just talk about your playing style and how you want to improve as a receiver during the offseason? Uh, being a physical speed back, uh, very powerful. Uh, being able to be smart and know the game, uh, most importantly, uh, just being able to be an effective player on and off the field. So that's how I kind of revolve my, myself around my playing style and how I carry myself in life. Corey? Have you have you always looked like that? Have you always been into weight training and, and working out? Like when did this all start? Um, 12, 14, 16? When did <laughs> you obviously are very committed to it? When did that start? Oh man, that started uh, a while back, probably when I was seven years old. I was uh, very committed to working out. I wanted a body, I be I wanted to be built. So I was just like I used to do a lot of push ups, a lot of sit ups. Used to go on YouTube some of the time and look up some of the insanity workouts where you do them at home and knee kicks and stuff. I, I was doing a lot of stuff, so it kind of started around the age of seven or eight. Uh -huh. I give you that. <laughs> the group of guys that came over from Alabama, um, are, are those guys you were particularly close with? And what's it like just having former teammates, you know, your new home? Uh, absolutely. Um, I'm very close with those guys. I mean, whenever I had a question about my recruiting process, um, I called those guys. When I got down here, I called them, hey, what's the closest food spot, you know, they got down here. What's it like with the workouts before I got the workouts? It was like, you know, well, like what's going on so I can be hipped on everything and just put together in all different places. They helped me a lot. Brendan? The other day, Coach Norvell called you a natural born leader. I guess, what are your leadership stylings and what's it mean to hear that from the coach so early on in, in your tenure here? Uh, just being vocal, uh, being a leader by example. A lot of the time, uh, a lot of people, can see that um, that I'm going to lead by example, and that's what I want to do. Uh, I can be vocal as well, but leading by example, showing people the way it's supposed to be done. Uh, I feel like that's that's a that's a big factor on how other people's actions carry on behind mine. Jordan, Roydell, adding on to that, can you talk about your relationships right now in the running back room, specifically Lawrence Tofili, but also some of the newer freshmen that are on the team? Can you, can you say that? I'm sorry. Um, can you just talk about your relationship with Lawrence Toafili and some of the guys in the running back room? Uh, we all close, man. Uh, we got a group chat that we all in. Uh, we communicate back and forth whenever we need something, whether it's something we need, uh, a question we have about a play, or if coaches want to get in touch with us, man, we all touch bases and knock everything out, whatever we need to do together. But we, we're super tight. Tyra? No, Tyra. Did uh, Jameis talk recently about all the, the grief he got when he came to Florida State back home? Um, did he convert any people around that area to Florida State? Like, what was it like watching him, you know, win the Heisman Trophy back then? Oh, uh, man, with me being at such a young age, I used to go to all the, the high school football games. Uh, it was kind of, it was kind of, it was kind of wild to see him on the team and he won the Heisman. I'm like, I'm at a young age, so I'm kind of still figuring things out. I know what's going on, but I don't, so it's like, Okay, I, I can I can do that there. Let's let's try. Let's go for it. And, and you know I kind of work my way around the things that he does and some of the ways him being a leadership, him being vocal, a vocal leadership. You know you see some of his videos, and uh, I kind of translate my work and what I do on and off the field to the, some of the things that he translates and does. Got a Zoom question for you from Matt Baker. Hey, Roydell, can you kind of talk us through the process in terms of when you wanted to enter the portal and, and what the thought process was there? Can you say that again? I'm sorry. I'm when sorry. you entered the portal and the thought process of how that all went? Oh, um, when I got into the portal, uh, the first person to contact me was uh, Coach Novell. And I just knew from right then, right there, that that was the, that was the, perfect, the perfect spot for me. Uh, the way he, when we first got on the phone, it was just, man, it was, 
you can tell his his intentions when he when he called me and contacted me as soon as I got in the portal. Less so picking Florida State, but when you're a, a player like you that's been established, you're from the state of Alabama, you're playing at the University of Alabama, what are some of the things that they're going to the process of, of maybe needing a change of scenery? So you said that last part again? What are the things that make a player want to enter the portal? I mean, when you're somewhere and you've been there for three years, you've been established, you're, you're getting playing time, what are some of the things that can maybe lead to wanting to see what else is out there? Uh, just the opportunity. Uh, Everyone has an opportunity on, uh, opportunity on the table, and I, I chose to take the opportunity. Uh, Coach Novell gave me the opportunity, and, and I'm going to take advantage of it, you know, and, and it's just a different feel, just getting to know everybody again and coaching staff, a new new feel, new playing style, and uh, playbook. So it, it takes some getting adjusted to, but I'm thankful and blessed for the opportunity that uh, Coach Novell gave me. Chris? <laughs> What's it been like over the last month getting to know Coach Yak, and what is he like in the meeting room? Oh, man, all of these guys are intense, man. The workouts, uh, me getting into the playbook, off the, off the field work, um, just being able to – just getting adapted, like I said, um, and, and, and getting locked in with these guys, man. We only got a couple more months until it's, it's game time, man. I want, I want to see what everyone's like. Brenda? What have some of your early impressions of DJ Uangalele been? What's he like personally as a leader? Those kind of things. Oh, uh, he's he's a he's he's a <laughs> laid back, but you can tell his work ethic. It shows a lot. He's a he's a lead by example and a vocal guy. Um, along with all the other quarterbacks, all of them do a great job. They stick together whenever they when things needs to be done. Uh, we all in the group chat together as well. So whenever something needs to go this way or some off the field work, some extra work, uh, we can get it done with those guys. So. You said you wanted to be uh, like a power back and a speed back. Uh, they had a guy like that in Trey Benson. Have you watched his, did you watch his film or have you watched his film from last year trying to see how you'd fit in and do you see any similarities in, in y'all's game? Absolutely, man. That guy, that was explosive. I didn't know him personally, but just watching this tape, man, that, that guy was a monster. <laughs> and and uh, his playing style, man, you can tell he's a hard runner, physical, fast. I saw a clip, man. The, the guy's he got some speed on the man for him to be that size. And I can I, I saw I saw a little myself when I kind of watched this tape and the, the playing style that they are um, getting fitted into. Um, I think TJ and a couple of the other guys that uh, played at Alabama talked about your, um, basically they said like you never have a bad day. Like every day of practice you're always in upbeat and mm -hmm. um, and you motivate them. Have you always been that way or is that anything that you kind of learned growing up as a player? Oh uh, man, you, you always be that way. You got to keep a smile on your face. You, you, you get to get this opportunity. You don't got to, you know. You got the opportunity and you get to do it. So that's how I kind of wake up and go about my day. And it gave me a little juice to know that I get to do it. I don't got to. Anything else for Roydell? We're good. Thanks, man. All right, thank y'all. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.